Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. Things are looking very interesting during the next two weeks, I think, but confidence in the developments is quite low. Without further ado, I'll begin by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Monday the 8th. At the outset, it's quite straightforward. High pressure is bringing dry weather to most of the UK, just some rain there in the far north. Through the first few days, not a great deal changes. It's a very, very settled scenario across virtually the whole of the UK, just the risk of rain at times continuing in northern Scotland. But as we go into the weekend and beyond, confidence starts to fall. Low pressure to the south becomes a risk. It could move northwards enough to bring thundery showers into southern and central Britain, but it's definitely not a given. Also, into the early part of next week, pressure starts to fall and the chance of rain and low pressure moving down from the northwest increases, possibly turning more changeable or even more unsettled. But as I say, rain amounts are very much open to debate. Taking a look at the air mass uh, temperature profile associated with that GFS run, yellows covering the whole of the UK really at the outset and that stays the same through the first few days really through much of the week the oranges mean cool, uh, very warmer but towards the end cooler air is shown to be pushing down from the northwest but again as I say I'll look at some of the other deterministic models to see whether or not they show a similar type of scenario later on. The two metre temperatures, which we can expect, so down at the ground level, well, it's heat wave conditions in southern and central Britain. Tuesday the 9th, 30 Celsius being the maximum value shown, even in the northeast there, 23, just a little bit cooler in the far northwest. And the trend through the first few days is for temperatures to be climbing, so by Thursday the 11th, we're up to 33 across southern and central regions. And the other thing to bear in mind is the possibility of some very, very uh, stuffy, humid and uh, muggy nights. In fact, this shows the max, uh, minimum values on Saturday the uh, 13th of August, so the overnight lows in London, 21 Celsius. So it would be a tropical night. I think it's got to be, the temperatures have to remain above 20 Celsius to qualify. Not great for sleeping. And the maximums, on Saturday afternoon, according to the GFS, 35 Celsius. Exceptionally hot once again. I suppose in some ways it pales a little bit when compared to the 40 Celsius that we recorded in July. But values like these, not that extremely high for the United Kingdom. And even in the northern half of the UK there, mid-20s is warm or very warm. By Monday the 15th, it's remaining hot in the south, the southeast East Anglia, so still the low 30s been reached, but it's turning a little bit cooler in the northwest as that more un unsettled or at least changeable pattern begins to take shape. Rainfall. The completely dry conditions have continued through the last week in southern Britain and if these forecast charts from the ECM model on the left and the GFS on the right are correct, that will continue to be the case through the next five days. In fact, most of the UK has no measurable rain. But moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day period and changes begin to emerge. Both models are suggesting significant amounts of rain in the northern half of the UK and interestingly, the ECM on the left has very wet conditions apparently for a time at least in East Anglia and parts of central England. Values there reaching 60 millimetres locally. GFS though, keeping things more or less dry in those regions. So big differences between the two models, highlighting the uncertainty about the risk of rain in the southern half of Britain at least. It looks more of a given in the north. Just taking a look at the London Mogreps rain rate 
chart to see fat sheds any light on matters for the south. There are a few spikes there beginning to show up from the 13th of August through to the 16th. An increasing risk of rain therefore in the south but probably not a very great one. Whether or not it will help to alleviate the drought conditions is open to question. With developments at the end of the first week beginning to look a little bit vague, does a comparison of the deterministic models make things clearer? Here is the GFS, Monday the 15th, low pressure to the northwest, starting to bring a risk of rain to the northern half of the UK. At the same time, the Canadian global model has low pressure, bringing some hefty showers to much of Britain, at least for chance of them. On the other hand, the German icon has high pressure remaining dominant, so it's a dry scenario. The European ECM looks a little bit messy with areas of low pressure coming into play. That was a model which was showing the heavy rain potentially affecting parts of eastern England and East Anglia especially. Finally, the UK Met Office Global, it also has low pressure returning. Some heavy showers would be breaking out, I would expect, if that one was correct. Taking the models together suggests at least an increasing chance of rain. Now, amounts are very difficult to predict. Downpours could lead to some locations having high totals in the southern half of Britain, whilst others stay completely dry. Therefore, confidence is low, but the trend towards the end of the first week is towards a more changeable scenario. With that said, how are things looking as we head through week two? As ever, at this range, it's just about the trends and the probabilities, not the specifics. And I'll begin with a 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air mass temperatures across the top look quite different to some of the recent updates. To begin with, they're well above a 30-year average, but there's a quick and sustained dip. The purple line there, the ensemble mean, becomes very close to a thick black line, the 30-year norm. In fact, if the warmer runs were stripped out, the few of them at the top end of the ensemble, I think that purple line would actually be a little bit below the thick black line because there is quite a big cluster of runs there which are forecasting slightly below average temperatures at this level. Rain across the bottom, a number of spikes are now showing. It does not look particularly wet, but if this was correct, I think the southern half of the UK would at least see some rain. Going up to Manchester, the air mass profile is very similar to the London one. The number of rain spikes is greater, but again, it's not terribly wet, just rain on some days, I would think. And finally, Glasgow, also similar in terms of air mass temperatures. If anything here, the dip below the 30 year average is a little bit clearer. So possibly rather cool after that warm start and also a wetter outlook. Some big rain spikes showing up on this chart. But once more, there should be a reasonable amount of dry weather in the northwest if this is right. But more rain than there has been recently and certainly more rain than through the first week of the forecast period. The two meter uh, temperature data table for London, significant differences here as well to some of the recent ones because now this orange makes up the bulk of the uh, shading in the columns and it's runs which are forecasting maximums of 21 to 25 Celsius. The reds and the pinks, which dominate earlier on, reduce in numbers. Those are the very warm or hot runs, 26 to 30 or 30 and above. So the trend through week two at the ground level is mirroring the trend at the 850 HPA level, cooler than it has been, significantly so, even in the south. Probably quite close to the average, maybe still a little bit above it. The Manchester view, this orange is dominant, the lighter one, 16s to 20s, still some of the 21 to 25 and a little bit of the 
uh, 26 to 30 there, but cooler in the northwest, up to Glasgow, and it's really just extending that cooling process. Some yellows appear here, the 11s to 15s, most of the runs in the 16 to 20 bucket. Taking it all together, it looks like temperatures through the second week are set to be a lot closer to the, closer to the average than they will be through the first. It's worth just taking a look at the rain forecast data table from the GEFS because this breaks things out more clear, clearly. There is, as I say, that chance of some wetter conditions through the second week, but even so, a lot of the runs are still going for completely dry conditions at the given time slots. The light grey is used to indicate zero rain, dark grey just small amounts of rain. If this is right, the drought conditions probably will not be eased a great deal, but at least gardeners may benefit from some rain. The GEFS 10-day mean surface level pressure plot, so Thursday the 18th of August, is also indicating that high pressure will be declining back towards the Azores, more of an Atlantic flow at this point with low pressure probably centred to the northwest, wettest in the northern half of UK. And that's also shown by the ECM ensemble, maybe more of a northwesterly tilt here, potentially cooler. The 10 to 15 day anomaly chart from the GEFS is indicating lower than usual pressure in the Iceland area, slightly higher to the southwest, again pointing towards the wettest conditions being in the northern half of the country. And finally, the GEFS mean surface level pressure data table for York. To begin with, low pr lower pressure at least is having more influence than it has done for some time. The greens making up 58% of this column on Monday the 15th are indicating runs forecasting between 996 and 1010 millibars. If anything, the trend later on towards the end of the second week is for pressure to begin rising once more that would suggest the wettest conditions could be early on, at least, or in the middle of a period, with a greater chance of it turning more settled and drier towards the very end of the second week. So, to summarise, week one, it's mostly fine, warm in the north and hot in the south. In fact, it's a heat wave. Temperatures could well reach the mid 30s Celsius. But towards the end of the week, so days six and seven, the risk of rain begins to increase in the north and there is a chance of thunderstorms in southern and central Britain. Week two, perhaps more changeable than it has been for some time early on with showers or even longer spells of rain, especially in the north, Temperatures a lot closer to the average, but through the week, and especially towards the very end, there is a sign for high pressure to be returning, so it may be turning drier once again. So, there we have it. High confidence in the short term, very warm or hot, temperatures probably peaking in the mid 30s Celsius in southern Britain, then things turn a good deal more uncertain. That chance of rain starts to increase, the possibility of thunderstorms, but they could turn out to be very localised. Many places could miss them or they may not even turn up at all. In the north, the chance of rain seems to be quite a lot higher though. I hope you enjoyed this video as ever and found it useful. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thank you for watching now. Bye.